exploiters and hackers. They were here already for a long time, but recently they got more attention with a comeback of Tubers, 93 and some other hackers. They managed to do things that they shouldn't be able to do. We've seen big games getting hacked with Meep City as a most well-known example recently. This leads us to the question if every game is hackable. The answer for this question is yes. Everything on the internet can get hacked, but although this is true, we can still make it really hard to prevent our games to get hacked. In this video I will go over the basics from security when making a Roblox game. First you need to know the difference between the client side and the server side from a game. The client side is basically the side from the game which the player is experiencing. This includes all the parts, bricks, trees, houses and so on. But the client side also includes all the local scripts. Local scripts give you the ability to leave the game whenever you want and build or destroy buildings for example. The server side is a side from the game which you don't see. The server side includes all the basic scripts so you load in with your shirt and pants when you join, join a game for example. The server side also includes data stores and more things like that. Now we know the difference between client and server we can get to the important part. To communicate between the server and client there are remote events. Most of them we can't see and are built in by Roblox, but some of them can be added by the game developer. This is also the vulnerability from the game. Remote events are the only way exploiters can use to get on the server site and do things they shouldn't be able to do. Exploiters have different tools to check all the remote traffic. So it is really important to secure the remote events on both client and server side. The remote event security on the client side will prevent some basic exploiters and exploits. But to keep the experienced exploiters out, we have to secure remote events on the server side so exploiters can use it, can use a while loop to run the remote event infinite times. Here we have an example to secure a kill player exploit in an FPS game. In this simple example we double check if the player has to be killed. We check it on both client and server side because the client side is all not always safe and can be avoided by exploiters. Now we have to ask ourselves what to do when there is an exploiter. You can do either two ways, I got this idea from the dev forum. You can do passive and aggressive anti-cheating. With passive I mean to undo the exploit because it might be a bug or something. But you can also use aggressive anti-cheating by punishing the exploiter with a kick or ban. This is what we see in Arsenal when someone is caught exploiting. Also if you are adding a ban system you really have to know how to undo a ban if that is needed. If you want me to make a video about that, let it know in the comments below. Anyways, thank you, thank you for making it until here. Leave a like if you learned something new. Subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it and it motivates me to make more videos. Thank you for watching.